Welcome to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. Here's your MotorWeek podcast host, John Davis. Welcome to MotorWeek's 30th podcast. I'm John Davis. We're glad to have you with us, and I'm joined here by Brian Roberts, our producer. Hello, John. And our writer, Shami Choksi. Hi, John. And our jack-of-all-trades, Ben Davis. Glad to be here. Now, coming up, we'll have our lightning round, and also we'll look at our MotorWeek mailbag. But this is a very special edition of our MotorWeek podcast because we're going to set back a little bit and take a look at everything that was new at the 2010 North American International Auto Show, uh, the most prestigious and most influential of all the auto shows held in North America. And Brian and I have just gotten back, but Ben and Shamit have also covered the show by the internet and boy was there plenty of stuff on the internet about detroit this year so let's uh kind of just get going uh brian i'm going to start with you you went to the show spent two days there trodging through that uh, kobo hall you know what what hit you between the eye what what excited well, you? well it was interesting you know this this year's show was uh smaller than in years past but there was a lot of substance i mean everyone wants to kind of forget about 2009 in the auto industry and, and kind of look forward and and besides product, what I thought really was um, some positive news was some of the manufacturers talking about, you know, GM, Chrysler, and uh, Ford, and even Toyota talked about um, growth in 2010 and actually maybe rehiring some people that have been laid off. Um, so I thought that was um, pretty positive. And, and you know, with, with unemployment rates in Michigan at almost 15 percent, um, I thought that was good news for folks uh, in Michigan. And I think some of the products that they showed, that you know, a lot of manufacturers showed, actually um, will get consumers really interested. So I thought that was pretty positive. Shamit, you basically watched all the headlines and the videos roll past your computer monitor. What did you think we were seeing? What do you think from afar the impression of the show that people will get? Well, I feel like the show, rather than uh, – so often you have production cars that excite people – and it seems like this show, there was more from the concept end. There was a lot of just exciting things coming in from the concept end that are potentially a production down the road. Um, it, it just seemed like every three out of every four major, uh, you know, uh, releases or unveilings here had to do with a concept. But just getting back to what Brian said a minute ago, just about things being positive. I, what I was a little bit disappointed in is just. My feelings towards Chrysler is a company that's already in trouble, and we're, in, we're in Detroit out there. And I just feel like are they are they just kind of laying back and dying? Well, at this what, point? what I think they're doing is they're treading water for the next year or two until they get more until they get some Fiat based small cars in 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 America. Right, Clearly, John? not having a press conference at the yeah. uh, Detroit Auto Show is not good for a Detroit based car maker. And even though they're hooked up now with Fiat. They had a very big stand. They had lots of displays. They lots of crowds Ferraris around. over. They yeah. had a lot of crowds around the Fiat 500. They had a styling exercise that reportedly shows, you know, a, it was basically a Lancia Delta with a Chrysler grill, but gives you an idea of the style and interior they want to do in their future products. Yeah, yeah. But I think they missed an opportunity. Yeah. yeah. What, what did you guys think about that the, the style of fusing of, of the Fiat and the Chrysler, uh, you know, it was real. Plan. It well, was very minor. It was just basically a Chrysler grill. Yeah, I mean, I think the interior was a step up from, from some of the current Chrysler products, but the exterior, yeah, I think they need to do a little bit more homework on that styling. Ben, any impressions? I took it as a kid in a candy store when I saw these pictures coming through. I, the uh, the stuff coming from General Motors makes me feel like, as an uh, American taxpayer, I'm getting every cent of my dollar's worth. <laughs> Regal RS? Uh, Regal like that? GS. 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 Yeah, that GS. was a stunning car. Uh, I like the Aveo, super sharp. It seems like they're pulling a lot of Opals over, which, how could that be a bad thing? I mean, it's not the Katerra age anymore. The, uh, the, the Aveo really, really did have a very European look to it. And what about the GMC Granite? That was a surprise. It was uh, it's a, a small urban people well, it's, mover. It's, it's a really two feet. I think it's two feet smaller than a terrain, so it's going to be their smallest GMC product. That's had, very cool. Looking. Had French doors yeah. and the it's seats folded class. to the side. Yeah, uh, it was uh, it was pretty interesting to see that they had not let up on the product throttle. Even yeah, though but that's, you know, that's they're trying to attract, attract younger buyers with that. Clearly, yeah, clearly. And the five point oh is back. 5.0 in the Mustang. <laughs> Finally. How many horsepower? 412. 412. Nice. 
Camaro. Yeah, not quite as much as Camaro, but if they've been beating Camaro in all the uh, comparison tests... With 100 less. Yeah, this should lengthen it a little bit further. You know, one, one product that I really did like was the new Focus. I mean, oh, they, yeah. They're trying to... You know, now they're, they're bringing these European products stateside. Um, you know, four-door, five-door. Um, we should point out it will be made, actually, in North America, but mm-hmm. uh, it'll also have... They, they've gone, Ford's going to uh, a system called My Ford, and they've upgraded their sync uh, voice activated system for internet browsing. But what they say they're doing is getting away from all conventional controls. So the touchscreen mm-hmm. you've got on your PDA is now going to be like a bigger version of it on your car, and everything's going to be accessed through that. I mean, you guys were on the floor. The focus was really on the focus, right? I mean, that was the show star. Uh, I would say that was Ford Star. I'm not so sure I would say that was the show star. There were quite a few. Um, uh, we, we mentioned the uh, the Granite. Yeah, the Cadillac. Uh, Cadillac I mean, uh, XTS the hybrid, Platinum the concept. Look great. Yeah, the, the, new, the Cadillac CTS V Coupe, the new XTS, uh, yeah. as you mentioned, from Cadillac. The e-tron, which is not the e-tron we saw in Frankfurt. No, that was uh, right, right. based on the what R8, and this one on the TT. It's I believe about the size about of the TT. Size. All yeah. electric, much prettier this time around. It was much prettier, wasn't it? It's was like when Absolutely. it scaled down. But what I thought was cool is there's an electric motor at each of the rear wheels, mm-hmm. and they both can operate independently. So that means you can use the torque to go around corners. Yeah, help you steer. I heard they can generate some incredible torque out of those engines too, out of those motors or other. And, and the. Uh, and the Aveo is not really the geeky little Aveo that we want to. No, it's a, but again, like Focus, that's a year away. But at least it shows um, what they're thinking. Um, hybrids and electrics. Anything make an impression on you? That Toyota was pretty stunning, and obviously uh, the e-tron yes, was the, amazing. Um, the FTCH. Yeah. What I liked about it, it was 22 inches shorter than a Prius, and you know. Prius it looks, you know, decent, but this thing looked really, really good. It was, it was well, nice. Ultimately, this would fall under a Prius brand. Is that correct? I mean, well, they made that announcement. There's, there's some feeling that they have um, not looked, not been forthcoming enough with enough uh, hybrid vehicles at the bottom end of the market, mm-hmm. and so this is going to come underneath the current Prius, and it'll probably be the first of this new quote unquote family of mm-hmm. Prius. But you know, I, I. Not so sure breaking Prius out into a separate family makes a lot of sense, but I guess that's what because the, they're going to have an awful lot of hybrids. Mm-hmm. But then uh, VW getting in the game, the hybrid game with the um, the NCC concept, which stands for New Compact Coupe, but in reality was apparently a look at the new Jetta. Should be a fun alternative to drive instead of the, the either the inside or the yeah, Prius. it's good looking, yeah. good looking new Jetta for yeah. sure. Uh, BMW. Anybody have a comment on the uh, prospects of driving a Concept Active E, the one series-based electric car that apparently they're going to do uh, what they've done with the Mini E? has a range of about 150 miles, um, and they're talking about the weight, uh, 50-50 weight distribution, so it should still drive like a BMW, which is yeah. uh, obviously important. Any um, impressions on the Mini Beachcomber? That thing's <laughs> cool. I mean, that's, we're talking like a throwback to a, a, the dune buggy style. Describe it. Yeah, it looks like a it's a dune buggy. It's Open got, air cockpit. Yeah, no yeah. doors. I think a fabric top, but you know you don't want you don't want to ride that thing with no top on too. It's just super cool. It's got an aggressive stance too. I can see him uh, as a, a, a beach rental buggy thing in uh, resort areas. <laughs> well, well, they used to make uh, what was called the mini moke, which yeah. really started out as a military vehicle and then ended up as a beach bum, a yeah. beach bum car, but. This one is actually the front end of it, they say, is what the new Mini uh, utility will look like okay. when it comes out. Right. I thought uh, the, um, back to, I think we talked about the Cadillac uh, XTS. I yeah. thought the Platinum concept, yeah. I thought that was pretty nice. And that's going to replace uh, the STS, STS and, and DTS. DTS. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, inside it was luxurious, um, a lot of horsepower, and uh, um, this one was a full-size plug-in hybrid. So, uh, But it was really attractive. One company that we haven't much talked about and who had a very good year last year was Hyundai. Mm-hmm. Uh, they uh, they showed a concept which they had already shown in Seoul, South Korea, called the Blue Will, which is uh, maybe a dedicated hybrid that they're going to build in the future. But they're going to have their Sonata hybrid later this year. So they're going to be getting into the hybrid game, I think, more than we've seen before. Something to do battle with the Prius. Yeah. yeah. Still, you know, of all the little cars on the floor, if you ask me what I wanted to own... CR? CRZ. Honda, CRZ. I mean, 
That was a cool oh, looking little coupe. Yeah. Evoke some memories of the '91 uh, CRZX, maybe a little. Yeah, fun. CRX. Fun to, yeah, it did. It fun did. to drive. Cool. Uh, and there were a lot of electric cars on a display on what they called Electric Avenue, including the Nissan Leaf. Did you see the Tango? Tango, the little uh, narrow vehicle uh, company out of, uh, I think, uh, Spokane, Washington. Yeah, Spokane, Washington. It, it's tandem seats. It's it's basically a, no wider than a motorcycle. Huh. So you know what they're touting is its main advantage for commuters? So you can go down the center line of the free line, uh, freeways. Wow, that's just dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I think that um, could you, Brian, you were there and with me, and you probably logged about 20 miles mm-hmm. on your shoe leather. How would you sum up the Detroit show? Well, I think um, you know, obviously, I think the auto industry is going in the right direction. It's now you know, substance, fuel economy, um, what I think consumers are going to want, and I think they showed a lot of vehicles that are are, are going to really uh, attract, um, get people's attention. So that's. Yeah, of course, inspired. We're inspired by by Ford, by uh, next to anybody else. I mean, we're, we swept the. Well, mention that. Yes, uh, of I course. Mean, you know, the, they, it was a North American Car and Truck trick. of the Year award. Yeah. They won both. They won the truck for the Transit Connect van. They won car for Fusion the hybrid. Fusion Hybrid. Yeah. And only three times in 17 years of the awards has uh, one manufacturer gotten both. So. And it was an American. Congratulations car. for them. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Indeed. Okay, let's move on now to um, a question that I think that that kind of spins off what you were talking about, Shamit. The momentum continues to build at Ford. Uh, December sales were up 33 uh, percent. By the way, after the at the show, they were talking about sales of the big SUVs, mm-hmm. like Expedition, up so much they're going to up production of those mm. because I guess gas is cheap and people still want them. Um, they won both awards for North American Car and Truck of the Year. What can Chrysler and GM learn from Ford's progress? Anybody want to start off? Well, I, I think some of the stuff that GM showed, I mean, GM has obviously gone in the right direction. I mean, they have a lot of really nice vehicles coming out. You know, so it's the, the Equinox, uh, the Cruze. There's a lot of stuff out there, This the, the Aveo. Um, so I think it is product, yes. You know, I think what GM lacks at the moment is a charismatic leader. You mean, Some dirt. You mean Chrysler? No, I no. think GM mm-hmm. lacks a charismatic leader at the moment. I think Chrysler's got a charismatic leader. But you GM has got basically, you know, this baggage from the government bailout. Uh, they've got Mr. Whitaker, who was ret- brought out of retirement, uh, to uh, run the company <laughs> at the moment. They don't have someone like Alan uh, Mulally who's mm-hmm. basically a, a coach that's getting got the company focused and they're moving everybody moving in the right direction yeah, and if you, I hope if you they, listen to one of his speeches he's always talking about team and team right. and stuff like that and, and there's no and one at GM to really what I see at GM is yeah they've got great product and all but they need somebody that's uh, we keep using the word coach because I think that's what you need it's not just it's not a cheerleader it's not someone to pat you on the back it's someone to point you in and point everybody in one direction and get on with it and uh, I hope somewhere I know that uh, Mr. Whitaker would like to find somebody like that and as a taxpayer and part owner of GM, I hope mm-hmm. he finds someone very soon. <laughs> well, it definitely seems like an easier fix than what Chrysler is up against. You know what I mean? Finding a, a, a person as opposed to a, a product. Product is, yeah. you know, it's it's an overnight decision as opposed to one that could take 10 years to fix. Yeah, I think Chrysler has got, you know, their, their, uh, their work cut out for them. Because remember, you know, if Fiat loses too much money, they could walk away from this deal. Absolutely. So, And that would be very sad. But... <clears throat> You know, they're smart people, and car companies often do their best when they're down and out, and they do have a a net under them now, so I think Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, a good sign. Any comment? Product, 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 I say. Okay, let's uh, move on now to our Motor Week mailbag. And by the way, if you have a question that you'd like answered on our podcast, visit www.motorweek.org, or you can go to pbs.org slash motorweek. And you can submit your question. If chosen, you'll get a free Motor Week t-shirt. Yeah. It's already been pre-shrunk. All right. (laughs) Okay, here's our question. And this is from uh, Aaron in Medina, Ohio. He asked, I'd like to know how the Toyota Prius, and he's talking about 2009 and 2010, 
will handle in the snow and ice. I know that true hybrids have an aggressive traction control system due to the nature of the electric motor. Now, I've read some interesting posts regarding earlier Priuses that stopped altogether in snow and ice, actually shutting down altogether. Is there any concern for the motoring public as hybrids become more the norm, especially for those drivers living in northern climates? Well, most any car that's got a traction control system, be it hybrid or not, if you your response to not going in the snow is to mash the accelerator harder, yeah, not, you will stop <laughs> because that's what traction control does. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have heard from folks that live in Vermont, where I often vacation, that the Priuses do not do very well in snow conditions. Uh, because of the traction control and often because they just can't put quite enough power to the ground. I've not had my own personal experience. Ones around here that we've driven in the mid-Atlantic states have seemed to be fine. Anybody got another uh, comment? I think uh, what as far, you... as, as far as handling in the snow and ice, I mean, obviously the best advice is, you know, when it's snow and ice, slow, slow, slow down. down. Yeah. I mean, the, the suspensions are competent. There's not any great difference there from any other vehicle. They've all got anti-lock brakes. Yeah. Uh, but it's the traction control that if you have never owned a car with traction control, you need to get used to it. Because when the wheels slip, if you apply more power, They'll keep shutting down. you will keep shutting yeah. down. So I don't think it's so much of a problem uh, that Aaron writes about with... Um, uh, with, with no, well, it's you're right. But I don't think it's so much a problem with hybrids. I think it's a problem with new technology that an awful lot of people are not accustomed to. Yeah. But I can't personally say that we've gotten a lot of complaints about that area. How about you? You've got a uh, wide range of friends that drive a wide <laughs> range of cars. Uh, I don't want to say anything bad about the Prius hybrid. Uh, I have seen one a couple on the side of the road during these heavier snows really? recently. Where, well, maybe uh, they were just cautious drivers uh, <laughs> waiting, waiting for the snowplow to come by. That's possible. That's possible. Uh, I, I mean, I, I guess your normal Prius driver. You're being awfully kind in it, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I better stop now as well. No, no. But, I mean, do you, do you have any inkling what happened? Whether they just couldn't go? or I mean, I can imagine that maybe the, ele- the torque from the electric motor in first gear might be... Uh, might, too much. Yeah, and, and the just slip. There's and any then, way to turn the motor off completely and run on gas or start out in second gear, then you, you'd probably be better off. Just yeah. limiting your torque that you put down in the first place. Well, sorry, Aaron, that we don't have any more firsthand advice to offer you on that, but our judgment is that it's more of a driver problem than it is a car problem. Okay, I think that brings to a close this very special podcast for Motor Week, our 30th edition and our 2010 North American International Auto Show special. I'd like to thank everyone here, Brian Roberts, Shamit Choksi, and Ben Davis. I'd also like to thank our audio engineers, Jim Bigwood and David Wainwright, our producer, Bob Mixter, our podcast creator, rather, Bob Mixter, and our producer, Michelle Parker. For all of you out there, be sure to listen for our next Motor Week podcast, and be sure to catch Motor Week on your local public television station. You have been listening to the podcast of Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine. For additional information on podcasts, videos, and showtimes, visit our website at motorweek.org. And watch Motor Week, television's longest-running automotive magazine series, each week on your local PBS station.